why they keep praying that I am those and Yo, what is going on, y'all? It's your boy Vel, and we are back with another Top 15 Strongest Heroes video. Now, the meta has changed a little bit. We've had some heroes nerfed and buffed, like the buff has changed and stuff like that. So, this is ever-changing. The meta is ever-changing, so we do these videos very frequently because there's just so many changes that comes up. And actually, it's a lot of different heroes on this list than the last time we did this video, like a month ago. So, I think this is going to be really, really fun. Make sure you write in the comment section down below below some of your favorite heroes and some of your strongest heroes if you have any questions about if you are considering that a hero is meta or not meta let me know in the comment section down below if you're new to the channel make sure you drop that thumbs up subscribe to the channel um, for more mobile legends content and also yeah just just make sure you comment down below and let us know some of your favorite heroes and stuff like that so jumping into it this is going to be in no particular order this is just going to be 15 of the strongest heroes that i see in the meta right now um, honestly, Mobile Legends is just really, really in a good state right now. This is honestly the most balanced I've seen Mobile Legends in a while. And that's that's crazy because there's so many different heroes. There's so many varieties of heroes that you can use in this current meta that actually can work. And I think this is the first time we've seen Mobile Legends like this. So these 15 are not the only heroes that's really, really good. These are just some of the greatest heroes that come to mind and in my mind. So yeah, if I miss anything that you think is really, really valuable, make sure you just write that down below in the comment section. But anyway, let's jump straight into it, man. So starting out in no particular order, we have Atlas. So this is really the tank and marksman meta. You see a lot of tanks in the game and you see a lot of marksmen. Atlas is one of the best tanks because he can literally group up a bunch of people and slam them wherever he wants them to be and that creates an opportunity for your team to just engage and dive in on them and just absolutely destroy them you can get people um bunched up together and hit with a bunch of crowd control and i think that there's really no other tank that can do it like that like you have some other tanks in mobile legends that's really really good at um having crowd control but at the extent that atlas has it it's no other tank that can do it like that and that's why he's so powerful right now i think Atlas is literally the strongest tank in the game right now. Um, let me know what your, your thoughts are on Atlas. I don't really get to see him much because he's an auto ban hero in North America. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Next, we have Natalia. Natalia is, uh, she's always been one of the strongest heroes for me. I think any hero that's been able to go invisible, you can make a play with that hero. I think the thing with Mobile Legends is... People ignored how powerful Natalia was for so long because she couldn't just wipe out an entire team. Like after she stopped being invisible, you could see her again. Like then you, like you just she can. She was basically only good for taking out one person. She couldn't just keep going invisible, invisible, invisible. But honestly, the job of an assassin, Natalia, all she has to do is really take out the marksman, and that's game changing. That really changes everything if she can just take the marksman out every single time even if she dies for it that's huge because as long as your marksman is doing well and she keeps taking out the um enemy's marksman it's really game over because these games are basically decided by marksmen right now how they should be so you have a hero like natalia now they've made her even stronger where she can go invisible multiple times i think she's kind of broken and overpowered right now so if you master natalia you can really dominate this meta and you can take out the marksman for sure and honestly you could probably take out a few more heroes before you go down with natalia so yeah natalia is very very powerful right now that's an auto ban hero for me as well i never want to go up against a natalia because of simple because of the simple fact that she can just destroy the marksman which is that's what this meta is all based around right now um but yeah that's that's my thoughts on her let me know what you all think Next, we have Carrie. Carrie is one of the strongest marksmen in the game right now. She's honestly probably the number one marksman in the game right now because of all the damage that she's able to do. She's a tank killer. She can melt through all these tanks, and you have a lot of tanky teams now. That's just the way the meta goes, and she's the best at bursting all that down. Bursting those tanks down and just destroying them fast. And if you're not a tank and you come across Carrie and she's fed, yeah, it's just GG's. Like, if you don't have a tanky team and she gets fed, it's, there's really nothing that you can do about that. Um, so, yeah, all the marksmen are in a really, really good spot. But Carrie, in particular, in this meta, definitely thrives and shines with the red buff. Um, and the fact that you can't really build to stop her. It's hard to build to stop her because of how her damage is actually output. So, um, yeah, that the carry is really, really strong right now. Next, we have a mid laner. We have Harith. 
So Harris is actually a really, really good pick right now. I know a lot of people have seen Harris, Harris get so many nerfs over the, um, the well, well, years now at this point. I think he's been out a few years at this point. Harris has caught a few nerfs and people think that he's become useless. But in reality, he can buy time. So let's say you're not the greatest Harith, you're not super, super strong to the point where you can just wipe out a whole enemy team. What you can do is buy a bunch of time, you can keep attacking people, getting shield back, and you can buy time, seconds, and, and, and basically give your marksman an opportunity to get to a fight, to start engaging, and to really take out some people, to take out some kills from the back line. Um, I think that these heroes like Harith and Esmeralda and stuff like that, well, when Esmeralda is encountered by um, a, a different hero, I think that these heroes are really, really good at buying time and allowing your team to make plays. I think this, this um, um, Harith in particular is a selfless hero, is a more selfless hero. Even though you can be really, really good and just get to wiping everybody out yourself, even if you're not insane, you can really buy time and create opportunities for your team, as opposed to certain heroes like Ling, you're either really, really good with him or you're really, really bad. There's no tanking. Like, he can't really buy time. He Like, if, if Ling does bad, then you're just without a mid laner and he's pretty much useless the whole game. And there's other heroes that's like that as well. Like, Lunix. Um, Lunix is a little bit more sustainable. She can play around and buy a little bit more time, but... Yeah, it's just a tanky mid laner in this meta is really, really good because it's all about letting your marksman get fed and creating opportunities for your marksman to attack. Um, so if you play the game through the marksman, Harith is really good at that. Next, we have Kimmy. Kimmy is actually very strong right now because she can constantly dish out damage. Um, and also, a lot of people are playing the 1-3-1, um, doing it like when they're using a 131 and i think that that's very very powerful because it allows a marksman to get fed super fast which kimmy is already one of the fastest farming marksmen that there is in the game because she doesn't have to worry about mana she doesn't have to go back to the base much and as long as she's protected she can just really roam around if she is combined with like a grok or something she can invade um and yeah it's it's really tough to take on a fed kimmy's and kimmy can get fed really really quickly so if you play kimmy well she's unstoppable so yeah definitely had to throw her on this list next we have bruno um bruno is one of the strongest marksmen in the game right now as well bruno once he gets fed which it does take some time for him to get fed but again any marksman in a 131 becomes viable and very very strong if you play Bruno well, he can get to like two shot and three shot and um, tanky players and everything. Like he honestly can melt a tank the same way Carrie can. I think that it just takes him a little bit longer than it takes Carrie to get to that point. Um, but yeah, he can he can do just as much damage almost as Carrie. Um, so yeah, Bruno is a huge huge threat right now. He's very very powerful. Um, but yeah, next we have Granger. Granger is still one of the strongest heroes in the game. He's caught a nerf and that hurt him a little bit. But at the same time, I think that once you get used to playing with, playing with him, you will realize that with a marksman, you don't really take many hits of CC and stuff like that anyway. So it's not the biggest nerf that a hero can catch. I think that a, a big part of playing the marksman role is just staying out of range of danger and staying away from people so if you've mastered that you've pretty much you're in a good spot to use granger at, at any point so um yeah i think granger is still really really good right now he's one of the fastest farming marksmen as well and he just does a ton of damage if you play him correctly if you have a frontline pill and stuff like that he can create a lot of opportunities along with working with the right team comp so yeah granger is very very strong um next we have claude because of this new 131 meta where marksmen are roaming mid and taking both buffs, Claude can actually get the purple buff, which saves him when it comes to that mana problem, and he can keep his stacks up a lot more easily. And then he get the red buff as well, so obviously he gets that damage boost. So basically, in the 131, Claude has become unstoppable. I know a lot of people have been wondering why people have been seeing Claude a lot more in the meta. He's, vi he's valuable again. He's very, very viable because of how fast you can get fed if you're doing a 131. So he's a very, very strong marksman. He's always been. But I think that now that people are realizing how powerful the bu the red buff is and how um, this, in particular, this strategy with the 131 can boost a marksman very, very quickly, a hero like Claude that would have taken all game to get fed can now get fed a lot quicker. So, um, yeah, Claude is really, really strong right now if played properly. 
Um, next, we have Ling. Ling is a very, very powerful mid laner. I think that in this meta, it's very valuable to take out the Marksman. It's very valuable to take out the Marksman, and Ling is one of the heroes that can actually wipe out a Marksman fast. So when it comes to that type of value that he brings to a team, um, I think that it's 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 like invaluable. Someone who can take out a marksman, similar to Natalia, except for Natalia, can, it's just can just go invisible, and it's just a lot more annoying than Ling, in my opinion. Ling, at least you can see him when he's turning into smoke, and you can try to dodge him. Natalia, you just never see it coming. But um, Ling is definitely still really really good, but. All you have to do is ca to counter Ling, honestly, is just take his blue buff and then he's just useless. So, um, he's a hit or miss type of hero. I don't necessarily like playing with Ling, um, but also it's kind of difficult and annoying to go against a good Ling as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a hit or miss hero, but he's very, very strong still. So, yeah, um, next we have Kagura. Kagura has been a solid hero for the longest. Kagura has not... I don't think Kagura is super, super flashy, but if you go against a good Kagura, you will realize just how strong Kagura is and how annoying it could be to try to take Kagura on. Um, and I think that um, she's very dependable. She's dependable. She's proven. She's one of those heroes that's been around a while, similar to Chow. And um, yeah, I mean, she like if you don't know who to go as a mid laner, I don't think you can go wrong if you pick Kagura. So um, in, in most cases. So yeah, Kagura is not bad. Next, we have Grok. Obviously, Grok is always going to be meta unless they do some type of crazy nerf to him, which I don't see why. I think he's actually a really, really balanced tank for what he does. He can clear lanes really, really fast. He can increase the speed that your, your team um, farms at. Um, I think that that's where his power comes in, that his, his ability to farm and clear waves fast and, and speed up these rotations. So he cut, he shaves a lot of time off rotations in Mobile Legends, and I think that that's where his value comes in at. Because if you have a Grok on your team, your team should probably be ahead in gold the most of the, most of the game. Um, but just being ahead in gold and farming and stuff like that isn't all you need. Obviously, you still need other things to win the game, but Grok gives you a huge, huge advantage. So he'll always be one of the best tanks, in my opinion. Next, we have Hylos. Hylos is one of the few tanks that people actually use to try to counter Grok, to, to, to try to actually take on Grok. And I think he does a good job at that because he can constantly deal damage and he has that stun. So if he just waits for um, Grok to finish it with his first ability, you can easily stun him or he can just or he can target a more squishy hero and just like or if you got carry, carry can easily melt a Grok. So certain depending on what type of combo you have, um, I feel like, yeah, Grok can be really um, Grok can be really tanky. But at the same time, if you have a high loss and carry Grok is really just free food so yeah it's the combination it depends on the combination and how you're going about using these heroes so yeah hylos is really really strong really good right now very good at engaging and taking out um um and being used as a counter against grok um next we have nana nana is one of the heroes that people have been sleeping on for quite a while um I used to talk about how Nana was one of the strongest heroes in Mobile Legends a while ago, and everyone said I was crazy. Everyone didn't believe Nana was really, really good. And when you do the math and you think about, yo, this chick can literally drop 11 stuns a minute. How is she not meta? Like, when you really think about it that way, you realize just how powerful Nana has always been. And now people are starting to realize that because pros have been using Nana a lot more and top players have been using nana so people are realizing how annoying nana can be and how strong that is and how she can counter a lot of heroes and nana has been getting a lot of play lately so if you master nana and get really really good with nana um you can be unstoppable but i hate going against nana so don't use nana if you see me please please don't <laughs> but yeah um next we have diggy diggy is also really really good right now because in this meta most heroes have slows or um stuns or, or some form of cc um diggy just really countering all that a well-timed diggy alt could really change the tide of a game like let's say atlas uses his crazy alt diggy hit that alt at the right time you just really made the strongest tank in the game useless so diggy he still has his uses um i think that He's definitely a pick that you need to pick if you see the enemy going for a heavy CC comp. I think he can work really, really well there. 
um that's one of the things that you have to really master in mobile legends is knowing when to use a certain hero and counter picking for things like that if you if you're going against a team with absolutely no crowd control it would be useless to have diggy and i see a lot of times diggy gets picked in situations like that where he's not actually countering someone so when you see the enemies are using heavy crowd control definitely grab diggy he will help your team out tremendously um next last but not least we have uranus now there wasn't really any solo laners on this uh, on this list because solo lane is not really uh prevalent lane right now i mean your job is to basically win your lane and hold your lane as long as you can basically you're like a punching bag because it's kind of hard to win a lane against a marksman and a tank in this meta so you kind of just got to be good enough to make them take the towers slowly i guess um and i think that right now uranus is the strongest at doing that now um he can take a lot of damage and he can clear waves pretty fast that's what's made him so powerful um uh, let's do a few honorable mentions you got jawhead chow is still really really good liam mort um so these are a few but yeah uranus i feel like is definitely at the top when it comes to solo laners so if you're playing the side lane honestly i would recommend uranus most of the times you just have to really know how to play him but that's pretty it that, that's pretty much it y'all uh let me know what you all think in the comment section down below like i said if you think i missed anything make sure you let me know um be sure to drop that thumbs up subscribe to the channel and also let me know what other type of videos you'd like to see on the channel um yeah thanks for watching make sure you subscribe all that good stuff and i'm gonna catch y'all later man peace out yo i don't know nobody so don't ask for no favors don't ask for no paper they leave when you lose it but they coming back later promise they coming back later i'm up now she wanna f now she keeps saying she in love now money got her on stuff wow all because i got bust now